Uh, well, hey there, everybody. I thought I would take a, a moment to have a quick chat with you about the Lock and Low Tactical uh, Solo System. There we go. See the box. Uh, it's an interesting, uh, interesting concept. Now there are a lot of charts in this, and uh, I've seen quite a few comments online about you know how big they are and all that sort of stuff. But look, it's uh, it's trying to make it. Player friendly, I think. Yeah, I'll just zoom out a little bit. And uh, you can see these charts here, and you look at your defensive posture, and then based on what's going on, you can you know, learn your little acronyms, the PUs and AEOs, and all that sort of good fun stuff. Uh, it's a lot of it's all color coded. See the green shield on, on the top left hand side there. Uh, it tells you whether you're going to, you know, you should take opportunity fire or not take opportunity fire or uh, conduct a uh, close assault in a defensive mode or what are you doing in uh, for movement uh, and what the overall uh, victory conditions uh, modeling is as well. So you can look at all this. Uh, and it's, uh, it was based on uh, the, oh, what's it called? Conflict of Heroes system. But uh, after a, a fairly good hard look at that, the uh, the folks at Lock and Low decided to remodel the game system, the tactical system. Uh, they may still have used some elements of the of the the uh, COH system. Sorry for the stammering and stuttering. I'm trying to think of three things at once here, and uh, I can barely think of one thing at once. So. They may have used some aspects of it. I don't know if they continue to pay for a license for it or not, or pay royalties or anything like that. But I do know that at one point it was under uh, under license, which uh, may then have led to them uh, you know, redoing the system for their for their own purposes. Now the the, the gameplay uh, for the AI is facilitated by playing these cards, and there are some really nice videos that go on. They're online right now. There's a new blogger chap uh, whose name right now I can't now escapes me, but I'll put it in the comments below when I when I post this. You should go check his blog, uh, his video blogs out. They're very cool. Uh, this this card uh, helps you drive your activity, your priorities, uh, both your priorities and your secondary uh, goals uh, in the game, and depending on whether you're in offensive mode or defensive mode, you're going to have a different set of set of cards with you that you'll be using to uh, drive your orders. And so when I so I played this game, this scenario twice uh, from Heroes of the Falklands, called uh, the Last Gasp. It's a pretty tough scenario for both sides to play. Actually, you've got some artillery that comes in for the Argentinians that are coming in this way, and they're trying to capture one, two three, I think there's four or five locations on the board, five locations on the board. The Argentinians uh, captured these two. Uh, they took this one, and uh, this one was abandoned to, to reinforce this by the British. And it, it was actually at that point where I started to see a divergence in what I would have done versus perhaps what the, what the solo system or the, or the AI was trying to tell me what to do. And so before I go any further, I'll just say this about AI systems in general. I know there is a great uh, hue and cry amongst game players that, uh, that play mainly by themselves, that they really want solo systems or AI, as they like to call it, or as, you know, solo enabled games. I absolutely understand that and understand how that can be a need and a desire. Uh, but it's not necessarily necessary for me. And in fact, when I play this game, I don't you know, usually use a, a solo system. If I get into some sort of quandary for one side or the other, uh, I, will, I will very simply just roll a die, odds or evens, and, and that'll kind of work itself out for me, generally speaking. But I very rarely get into that situation. Now, do I sometimes favor one side over the other? Well, yeah, I probably do. Uh, that happens. Uh, do I... Uh, do I uh, know what my, my great plan is for the defense or the attack, as the case may be? Yeah, I kind of do most of the time. But also, uh, the way I play games, I'm typically rotating through a, different, a few different things. So it might be a day or two sometimes, or a few hours, and I may have to walk away from the table and come back. I 
Sometimes I can't remember what I was going to do, or sometimes I change my mind. So it doesn't really bother me that much that I don't have an AI system for this type of game. Now, I can absolutely see where perhaps some card-driven game or point-to-point card-driven game, you absolutely want an AI like uh, that you can get in uh, you know, Churchill and uh, obviously all the coin games and stuff like that. But you know, we all know they're not really war games. They're just war-themed resource management games, right? Oops. Okay. Just kidding, guys. Uh, Let's leave the coin system alone. I think AI for this type of system, uh, for this type of uh, low-level activity, is very, very difficult to do. It's very difficult to craft a system that's going to be right all the time, particularly when you have unique capabilities. So, you know, you've got these uh, British forces uh, in Malay. They roll a D8 instead of a D6. Well, you know, they, uh, AI is not taking that into account. All it's taking into account is the the status uh, based on you know this this order sheet based on whatever's on the chart for the defense. And there there came a divergence in in the gameplay in about uh, game turn four actually, right near the end here, where there were units over here, and I was looking at what I wanted to do for the British and we were using the AI for the British folks <clears throat> and so uh, we, we had some choices we could stay here and hunker down and try and keep one hex uh, and, and and hope that we would get lucky in the Malay but I had a bad feeling about how the Malays were going to work out or I could move assault move over here be ready to reinforce this Malay if it uh, if the guys actually survive the turn or if they didn't survive, then jump into here. And then it was going to be a long walk for the uh, the Argentinians to come across here and, and, and get all the way over to here. It's plus three to move into this hex anyway. So that's going to be almost a full move to get into there and another move to get over there. So there's a good chance that they might not make it. And if anyone lived, they might get an opportunity to fire those guys, and uh, we might be able to save the day is the way I was thinking of it. And the other reason why I wanted to move over here is it also gave me an opportunity to op fire or shoot on these units and potentially protect this guy. So I assault moved to here and then waited to see what happened here, and things went horribly. So I took my shot here, and then in the next turn, I was lucky enough, I actually got... Uh, got the um, initiative, and we jumped in and went into uh, Malay. Now, that um, Malay didn't get resolved straight away, of course, that you, you don't uh, resolve them straight away. Um, then uh, these guys here, where well, there was two dudes over here with a gun, uh, some sort of gun, where are they? I don't know where they are. Uh, there wasn't that, so maybe they're in the hex actually. Yeah, so it was this commander, and, and uh, there was also this dude. Uh, this commander with the machine gun and the squad, uh, or whatever, was here. And so uh, they came trotting up and, and they jumped in the Malay, and then it was it was uh, uh, to basically two stacks like this fighting off against each other. So it was really tough, really tough on the British. Uh, and I don't think you could model that in an AI based system. So I, that was where I said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step away from the solo system for the time being, and I'm going to play the British the best that we can play them and uh, run, run through. But the rest of the way, you know, we used, uh, we used the cards and went through the actions, and it all seemed to work out uh, fairly well. So I, I, I'll say this uh, about it. I don't need this system. There are probably many folks who don't need this system, but those that desire it, you have a pretty robust AI system that could be applied to the lock and load tactical games. Um, I'm not sure that you can use it for any other game because it's got some very specific uh, terminology in it that really relates just to lock and load tactical, I believe. But uh, I quite liked it, and uh, I think it, well, I, I, I like it for what it is, let's put it that way. And I think if you're a sort of person that wants to play with AI, then uh, this is probably the system for you to purchase. Uh, it's, it's a very well-produced uh, system. People are complaining about the price of it, but there are, you know, there's a lot of cards in this. Uh, it's a nice, big, robust box. There are many charts, plus a full color rule book there's one two three four what's that five six six things six 
you know, these big charty things, and then a manual, and uh, that's clocking in with the big font at uh, uh, 13 pages of rules, but then with a full walkthrough from page 14 through 36. So a very detailed walkthrough of that. Uh, like I said, there are a couple of good bloggers online that are playing this and using this to play. And uh, you should go check them out and see how they're doing things and get a feel for whether this is right for you. I hope you enjoyed that quick little summary. I enjoyed my Heroes of the Falklands, of course. It's one of my favorite modules from Lock and Load. I hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you soon, and thanks for checking in at the Big Board. Later.